Welcome to Gratitude Space Radio. I'm your host, Chris Palmore, founder of GratitudeSpace.com. My sincere thanks for listening, subscribing, and rating this podcast. Uh, welcome to uh, Gratitude Space Radio. I, I'm with Medea Kalantar, and uh, welcome to the space. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to all your listeners and all your beautiful souls that are here today. I'm so grateful and honored to be here. Oh, thank you. I, I'm so uh, honored to be talking with you, and I, I, I absolutely love what you're doing, and uh, I'm excited to be sharing what you're doing. And, um, you know, I, I, I just wanted to press this. You know, we have a friend, we have a couple of friends, but I was talking to my friend Bobby yes. about some stuff going on in my, you know, with my gratitude practice and everything. And he's like, yes. I, you need to talk to Medea. He specifically <laughs> was like, he's like, you've got to talk to this woman. And uh, I, I love Bobby so much. And I, I will, anywhere he directs me, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to get on the bus. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you know what? The universe always brings people together because it's so funny because. Uh, Nusha also uh, from the writing community, she messaged me privately and she says, you have to check out what Chris is doing. You have to submit something. So I'm like, okay. And then Bobby did the same thing. So I'm like, you know, the universe is bringing us together for a reason. So it's just so beautiful. And I'm so grateful to both of them for connecting us too. Likewise. Yeah. They're both wonderful people. And uh, I, I uh, you know, the project, which I have with, I haven't really talked about on the you know, podcast is, you know, <laughs> engaging people and sharing gratitude in the writing form. And uh, it, it, it excites me to no end uh, the fact that I can be a part of putting that call out and that it's happening, you know, yeah. just that, again, putting it out and then it's happening. It's a, it just, so, you know, receiving your, your letter and then getting right now. So the cool thing is, is like, I put that call out, you know, and now here we are right here, right? This is a byproduct of just putting the call out. Obviously exactly. I've got your letter, which is beautiful. And right. we're working on that, but this is completely separate. This is just separate. a, by <laughs> this is a byproduct yes. of putting the call out. Yeah. So it's uh, we get to connect with other people that um, understand gratitude and want to pulse that light out into the world. So it's a, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful thing. So let's, um, Let's talk about, uh, well, let's, for starters, can you um, tell the people a little bit more about yourself and what you're doing and your passion? Yeah, absolutely. So I am a children's book author for the Honey Cake uh, series. Um, I actually uh, wrote this book when I found out I was going to become a grandmother. So in 2018, my daughter, Shanaz, who was suffering from PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, never thought she could have children, was planning to actually uh, get married the following year, so we were planning a wedding. All of a sudden, surprise, surprise, uh, was found out she was having a baby. And I got so excited and so elated that I was gonna become a grandmother. So in honor of my baby, my grandmother, I started to bake a honey cake because honey cake in our culture is for celebrations or stuff like that. So while I was making the cake, I was thinking of all the different ingredients in it. There's coffee and cinnamon and nutmeg and cloves and all these beautiful, rich ingredients. And I was thinking, you know, this cake is going to be kind of similar to my future grandchild because I'm from Georgia, my husband is Persian, but my daughter's fiance, Brandon, is Jamaican and Guyanese. So <laughs> this child is, has all this mix of ethnicities. And that's how the vision of honey cake came to life. Honey cake meaning a person that's a mix of ethnicities. And then I have to tell you, Chris, I have no background in writing. I have no liter literature background. I had no thought process that I was going to be a writer, but I woke up one day and I wrote five books in four days. I, it's oh. like I started to channel these messages and mm -hmm. I just started to write because it's everything I truly believe in because everyone in the book is actually my mm -hmm. family. So that's me and that's my husband, my daughter, my, and her, my son-in-law. The only fictional character is Nala because mm -hmm. when I wrote the books, I didn't know what Shanaz was going to have. She ended up having a little boy and his name is Wilkenzo. So, and that's how the stories came about. So the first book, you know, Honey Cake of Family Spices, the grandmother's teaching Nala how to bake a cake. And she's explaining how each delicious ingredient represents a different family member with his or her unique ethnic background. But the main message of the book is that no matter where you come from or what color your skin is, we're all one race, and that's the human race. 
So, and that's like what Honey Cake's about. Each book has a valuable life lesson. And I'm also a Reiki master and practitioner. So I've been doing that for five years now, helping people overcome any kind of fear or anxiety. So my second book that was really easy to roll out was Help I Swallow the Butterfly, because that's teaching children how to overcome anxiety. It's a plan where it's like she goes to school, she's about to present, but she gets really scared and she freezes up. But the teacher says, oh, don't worry, honey, you just have butterflies in your tummy. But she didn't know what that meant. So she ran home and she's like, mom, help, I have swallowed some butterfly. But she realized it was just because she was feeling anxious. Um, so if the book teaches mindfulness, so it's an introduction. So there's step-by-step -step meditation guides, eating exercises, and also setting positive intentions for the day. And then my favorite thing, because I always say that, you know, I'm here to spread love and light and to inspire kindness. So my third book, Special Magical Powers, is the special magical powers we have inside, which is kindness. So Nala goes on an adventure with her uh, grandma and her uh, uncle JD, which is my son. Um, and she's donating her unused clothes and toys to a shelter for families who have lost everything. So now we're teaching children the spirit of giving that it could be any time, you know, and also while she's going to the shelter, she's seeing all the different ways she can spread kindness and by smiling at people. So I always think of people as candles. So if you look at someone and they're having a really bad day, you smile at them and then all of a sudden they feel better. And then because they're smiling and they're feeling good, they pass it along. So it's like that magic just continues through. So things like that, just smiling at people, or opening the doors or using your manners like please or thank you. So things like that. So again, valuable life lessons that, you know, that we can teach to our children. And then my fourth book, which is really important, is called A Circle of Trust. So teaching children the value of honest and open communication in a safe space. How important is that mm -hmm. to teach children that important lesson because if they know that they can come to their loved one and not be afraid or ridiculed or judged about anything that's happened, if something has gone wrong, they don't have to hide it. And they can say, you know, this has happened and own up to it. By the time they're adults or when something even harder comes along that they have a hard time to discuss it, they already built that foundation with their family. So I thought that was really important. And then of mm -hmm. course the fifth book that's coming yeah. out uh, in September 1st is um, counting on my blessings and that's all about teaching gratitude how important is to teach that to our children and not only when things go right but when things don't go right because we have to be grateful for those things as well and of course all the magical uh, miracles that happen every day that we don't think about you know you know like waking up being able to breathe or being able to take a shower or all the frontline workers that out there Say, you know, doing all the work just to make our lives a lot easier. So that book's, just, you know, teaching Nala how to overcome uh, the green-eyed monster because she's about to become that's a right. big sister. Jealousy. So, mm -hmm. Jealousy, that's right. So that's how you get over any challenges that if you just take the time to think about everything you feel grateful for and stop living in that lower vibration of jealousy, fear, whatever, and get in that higher frequency, then everything is bliss that you could be in the same situation in your life. But if you just think of it in a different perspective, you start feeling better because you're not feeling that low vibration frequency anymore. That's so true. Perspective, I, I think I consider perspectives like one of the, the uh, keys to unlocking your grateful heart. Like it's, it's, it's so, it's, it's, it's so important without perspective you can't appreciate where you are and you can't you can't real without perspective you can't realize i have a choice in this too you exactly. without perspective you're going to be a victim and then exactly. you're just gonna yeah um and the fact that uh like i said yeah you know you sent me your book and i i read it and i got re i did really get emotional over it just because i i understand i i understand the simpli you you put it so simplistic and it was so beautiful and it hit it 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 connected on so many different levels. Um, I really, I mean, this, uh, you know, you, so she has this jealousy, which is very relatable to everybody. And, and, and you explain it really well. And it's a kid, it, it explained to a kid, this is really well. And then, um, you explain, you know, what you, your character explains to her what's going on there and what, you yeah. know, what, what she can do to turn that around, which is gratitude. Okay. 
gratitude can erase jealousy. Um, gratitude right. says, I have enough. I don't need to have what you have. That's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's you know. right. It takes the want, the lack of lack of want and have healthier and happier. It's an, act, it's an actual study that if children are taught gratitude from an early age, by the time they're older, they're so much happier because they're not looking of things of what they don't have in their life, of what they think they're lacking. They're just so grateful for what they do have. You know, like I said, you can put anybody in any situation. They, one person can be in a Lamborghini and they're thinking, oh, you know, I have these bills to pay or whatever. And the other person could be in a Lamborghini and say, oh, I'm so blessed and grateful for, you know, this vehicle I have or whatever. They're both in the same situation, but have a different thought process. And I don't understand that. You know, I, I always say that, you know, things happen to us in life that we can't control, but we can control how we respond and yep. react to it. Mm -hmm. So if we just change the perspective, remove ourselves from our ego, from our victim mentality, and then think about it in a different way. Sometimes it is a little bit challenging when you're in the moment, and I understand that. You have to allow yourself to go through the grieving process, you know, with if especially it's something traumatic or tragic. But then, you know, step out of that and then rise above because, you know, life isn't promised to anyone and every moment counts. And that's why it's called today is the present because it's a gift. It's the gift and we should be just grateful for it. That's, uh, and you said so much good stuff there. I was, I was <laughs> doing my best not to like think about how I, you know, to, I was trying to just listen to you. Um, <laughs> I had, cause I had thoughts and I was like, let them go listen. You know, I'm going to be present. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I'm so, I, I'm so in tune with what you're saying. Um, um, geez, what was I, I, I completely, cause I had my train of thought there. Um, yeah, it's the presence of gift, uh, perspective and, um, geez, so I'm completely lost now. Okay. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, geez. So I think we get back to with you in the book there, you know, she, she, she's letting her have perspective. Okay. I think I know what I was going to say, you know, the, the, that idea of not counting other people's blessings. Um, you know, I, I read a book recently and, and the thought process came around to, you know, if you were, if you were talking to an adult, you could say something like, you know, just stop counting other people's blessings. That's it. Right. Just stop yeah. doing it. Um, you know, and when you, okay, so basically you know, trauma, that's where I was. I, I was, I was reading into you. I wanted to add to your, your trauma, which was right. And we're saying very similar things yeah. with trauma. Obviously um, I can't speak to anybody's pain, but I think the most important thing is, is that the individual knows that it's a choice um, mm -hmm. or they know that this is not forever. And that, um, that they, at some point they're going to have a choice to decide if they want this to be, this is my stopping point or this is my going point. Um, right. You know, but they want that to define them, right? Yeah, they don't want exactly. Whatever yeah. happened to define them. Like I'm going to use you for an example because mm -hmm. I read all about you and I think it's so beautiful how you started this. Oh, thank you. So uh, God bless your mother, first of all. Mm -hmm. So thank you to her for bringing us you and that, you know, that you started this because of the letter to your mom and, you know, about the birthday. And that was so so beautiful to me that that's how you started uh, with this gratitude journey. And, you know, you made a conscious choice that you, as long, you know, it was traumatic for you to lose your mom, but you said, I'm going to take this and I'm going to continue it on. And then you started writing the letter to your father and then you bring everybody else into this world with this gratitude. And I think that's so beautiful. So that was a conscious choice that you've made and making a difference in this world with that. And what a beautiful way to uh, have a tribute to your mom because of it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I, that, I, I found that, you know, in my situation, it really became, uh, in this, you know, it's the idea that gratitude, I, I like gratitude is like an anchor, or it's like a lighthouse. So it could yeah. be an anchor or a yeah. lighthouse. Sometimes when you're, you're out there, it's just important to know that you have things to be grateful for, which can allow you to take a breath. And that's yeah. sometimes all you need to know and you, and you have to go back down. Yeah. It's just, it's just gratitude allows you to take a moment away from whatever the turmoil is. It can allow you at that moment, just to step away for a second, which yeah. is good, you know, before you get back into the mess. Um, yeah. And just knowing that it's there, knowing that if you wake up, if you just wake up and you and you appreciate the fact you're alive, a lot of bad stuff can go down in the day, but you will yeah. at least know, okay, I'm alive. 
<laughs> or whatever, you know, whatever your yeah. thing is. I don't and know tomorrow's what it is. a new day. Yeah. And, <laughs> tomorrow's yeah. a new day. We have fresh start. Whatever happened today, it doesn't matter. It's already gone. It's in the past. It's finished. And tomorrow we start fresh. Yeah. So yeah. that's the beauty of it too, right? And and that's what I love about gratitude. And I think the uh, how I started my journey was actually reading The Magic, uh, which was really great because like I'm such a typical eight personality. I'm very structured. I'm very organized. And uh, I can read a book in four hours, like, I, like the whole book, right? But that book made me do homework after every chapter and I couldn't go on to the next one. And that was, I think, my, my defending moment of really like putting gratitude into motion, like for, you know, for me. So, you know, of course, there were so many things in our life that, you know, that helped me shift and make the person I am. But um, I think that was the one book I think that really helped for me. I haven't, I haven't read that. I have to check it out. Yeah. Was so you saying that by doing the daily practice, it allowed right. you to just to slide into this place and, uh, yeah. just to focus and zone into that one thing that you learned that day and to be grateful for it. Like, you know, and that's how I started my day. Like that's how I learned that I would, before I wake up in the morning, I say, thank you. Thank you for another blessed day of being alive. I'm so grateful for all the abundance in my life and all the abundance is yet to come. I am in loving awareness, right? That's what I say before my feet touch the ground. I don't touch my phone. I don't look at anything else. I do that. And then I go into my quantum breath and then I do my meditation. And then I can, cause I'm setting the, the tone for the day, right? Right. And then at the end of the day, I do the same thing. I do my affirmations and then I do my gratitude for the day. You know, whether it's um, something that was fantastic, like having a wonderful uh, moment here with you today, Chris, and meeting such a beautiful soul like you and being on your show, or if something went horribly wrong and I had to learn a very valuable lesson because that there's beauty in that too, right? So I never say there's ever uh, winning or losing. I think there's winning because you win by accomplishing something or you win by learning a very valuable lesson, life lesson. That's so true. And uh it's so yeah it's so important that i mean this is the most simplest thing anybody can do to start a gratitude practice the which i call i i kind of think i i equate everything just into musical terms so basically if you're wanting to you know start a gratitude practice you got to learn your scales learning your scales it's just it's just simplistically stating what you're grateful for in the most simplistic easy less very in, anybody could do it a child could do it uh, you know, what are, what are the things that I'm happy for around here? You know, um, that's where you start, you know, and, and, and if you do that in the morning, that's great. And then, uh, so, you know, with my, I, I've can kind of consider what, what I, what I do and what I strive to do is be a gratitude conductor. So yeah. the idea of the orchestra is, you know, my thing is, is I, I didn't teach the person how to the scales. I wasn't there with the, without the instrument. I wasn't there when they practice. I didn't get them, you know, involved in the band, but we, I just want to be, in front of the person to go, that's all I want to do. I just want to trigger, <laughs> I just want to trigger the that's moment right. that allows them to ex make the expression, which is all theirs because that's, that's there. That has nothing to do with me. And it's not even, it, it, anybody can do it. That's right. Um, you know, and that's, uh, so, you know, playing. So in that scenario, what I like to think is you have the, the beginner playing the scales, but then you have learning songs and learning songs is what I consider gratitude cube. So this is where you, take an idea and you go in depth with it. So yes. um, it's in this work. That. Yeah, this this works with people, things and places, experiences. You know, it's very simplistic to take um, any one item. If you're listing five things, you take one of the things. It could, so it could be your bed. Let's just go with your yeah. bed. Okay, so I'm grateful for my bed. So why am I grateful for my bed? Well, um, I it's comfortable. Uh, yeah. You know, I've got a nice, it's warm. It's it's warm. Crazy. I got a pillow. I've got, I, it's, there's nice temperature controlling. I, you know, it's dark. Uh, I can listen to my music in there. I get good sleep. It's peaceful. You know, um, it's off the ground. You know, there's just, there's so many, and these are things, again, these are everyday things that everyone had, nor, most people have, but bottom line, if, if you start saying why you get emotion, what you're doing now is you're attaching emotion. That's and right. that's so much more than playing the scales. Absolutely. That's, it's, it's, it's so, it's, and, and that thing also works with people. It's really great. Right. Like, why, why do I love this person in my life? And then what happens is you go, 
well, this is why, this is why you start thinking you you recreate memories, these happy memories. And That's these, right. And you, these chemicals in your mind. Um, and, right. it, and, it, and it, you feel what happens then is a word, a person's name becomes love yeah. because you've, you've put things behind it. And that okay. works with, so it works with people, places, but I, I like, I like the idea of like, looking back at what had to happen for you to be in the moment you are with the person you're with, okay. you know? So, you know, I, you know, that, that's another, that's another way where it's like, okay, well, you know, a lot had to happen for yeah. me and you to be in this moment. And if we yeah. both think back about these steps and the people we met and the things we did and the places we went, and then we realize we're right here. If you appreciate where you're at, you yes. can have, you can think about that. If you have appreciation in your life, yes. you could be in a moment and you can have all that happen. And then that is really, I'm like, I didn't Mind even blowing. go into expressing it. Right. But I can yeah. feel it. I'm talking about, yeah. it. I can feel the chemicals in my, in my yeah. body and I, the excitement yeah. around. Um, the endorphins are firing up. And... Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm excited because I, I appreciate it so much. I appreciate all of it, the good and the bad. Cause you and gotta now you're take... raising your vibration to here, right? Exactly. Because I, 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 accept, I accept it all and I, I realize that uh, you have to have the good and the bad. It all had to happen. It all had to happen exactly the way it happened. So That's I could right. be sitting here in front of you and I could be having this conversation and having this connection. Um, so that, you know, that's, that's that idea. But the conductor, again, I feel like on the hierarchy, if you can. So it's really great to be alone and talk about your grateful. for. That's wonderful. But if you and then if you can, if you can take depth, that's spectacular. But if you, the, the conductor premise is you can initiate somebody else because now you're bringing somebody else in. Yeah. My, it, it is by far the, the best experience in, uh, in gratitude there is, honestly, uh, is when you, bring a, when you bring a second person. Because when I ask you and you share, the amazing thing is I get to initiate this creation of this beautiful thing and then it's a reflection back at me. And it's, and you cannot get that by yourself. No, you, you have to include somebody else. And the cool thing about this idea is it, it isn't even like you and I, you know, even if I wasn't sitting here saying, thank you for coming on the show, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just asking you to share what you're grateful for. So you could do this to a stranger. Yes. It could be a complete stranger or it could be your best Absolutely. friend. Uh, yes. It doesn't, it, it, there's no roadblocks. There's no. no reason why you can't engage somebody in that process. So That's I know I was just going on my, uh, my orchestration rant there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I enjoyed it very much. So thank you for that. No, I completely resonate to what you're saying. And uh, I, I, I agree with you 100%. And that was the intention of the series is that, you know, I want to uh, shift the universe in a positive direction. So, uh, and if I can make a difference, because we all have the ability to make a difference in this world, but together we can make a change. Right. So, and that's what we're doing. We're as a collective coming together and we're making a difference and then making a change, slowly shifting, you know, just putting that thought like you right now, I put that thought that little, we're planting our seeds and then we're right. watching it flourish and some might blow away and some may, you know, not do well. But then some will grow and they prosper and then and then those seeds will fall down and they will plant and they will keep going and keep going and that's what we are here for you know i'm here as a conduit to serve for the higher good that's beautiful and i, I again back to your book i love uh i mean teaching kids about gratitude is is such a mass it's i feel like the idea behind your book and what you're doing it's like a such a super it's like a superpower i mean uh just being able to simplistically uh, I mean, your, your art form is, is out there. It's got, or this book's about to come out and it's going, it's going to, it will assist uh, parents in teaching kids about gratitude. And that's yes. so freaking beautiful. And that's why, it, that's why it hit me so much because I know what's going to happen. And I know, I know that it is happening. And um, it, this, this tool you made, is going to go out into the world and it's going to impact people. You're never going to see or ever even hear about. You will hear some, but it's just, you just, it's a, a book's a really beautiful thing because you don't know where it's it, somebody gets it right but you don't know where it goes no nope, it can go nope. it can go anywhere it, it yep. could have said it could have been bought sat on a shelf for a year and the next thing you know it's over here and yeah. and it's the message is harder you know i mean just the again like we're talking about we just we just we just all we can do is um create and release and this okay. uh, and just know that it's going to do what it's going to do and that just knowing yeah. is very exciting 
and, and that, you know, and that makes it more than worthwhile. You know, that, yeah. that makes everything, everything worth it. But I just, I, I love uh, kids, kids learning gratitude is such a, um, you could, I mean, it's, it's so beautiful. I mean, yeah. thank you again. Thank you for, no, for writing the pleasure. book. I really, uh, it, did, it really did touch me because I really, I, I really it. appreciate wonderful. it. Yeah. That's the beauty of the books is that I've had so many adults tell me that even though these are considered children's books, um, adults enjoy them as well. And um, it's secretly a message to parents as well. <laughs> Right. <laughs> to remember things because you know people get caught up in their everyday life with work or shuffling kids from one thing to another they forget the valuable things that are important in life and that's what each of every story of the books in the honey cake stories does you know they all have a metaphor they all have an activity of doing a family bonding together one is cooking one is building blocks one is donating uh one is like uh you know gratitude you know giving back to the world and all that too. So that's why I think the, the, the fifth book was a beautiful uh, finishing touch to the series of teaching gratitude. You know, you have teaching children about diversity, teaching children about mindfulness, teaching children about kindness, and then teaching children about open and honest communication. And then of course, tying it off with gratitude. So yeah, it, it, you know, I'm just, so honored and grateful that I, I'm able to be, like I said, a, a conduit of this message giving to the world and how, wherever it goes, it goes and whoever it resonates with, I'm just blessed and honored to make a difference in that one person's life. It's, it's such a beautiful thing. Um, <laughs> I was thinking, um, you know, when you say it's the fifth book in the closure, you know, there's a really great author and podcaster named Dave Ashbury. Okay. And he, uh, he had a Ted talk uh, several years back, but it was, um, you know, he talked about all these amazing things he learned about biohacking, all this stuff. It was really, it's a really great TED talk. The very end, and I have a really great memory of this because I was watching this TED talk and then I got in my car and I was just listening to it on my yeah. phone sitting on my driver's seat. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he said, he said, you know, if you, he said, you could ignore everything I just told you about if, if you just decided that you want to start practicing gratitude every day. And I remember I stopped, I literally stopped my car and I was like, are you kidding me? I was, I literally was talking to myself. Like he, he wanted, so he told all, you know, he buttoned it up at the end with yes. here's, here's gratitude. Here's gratitude. This is very important. I'm closing with this. This <laughs> yes, is gratitude. Right. And then his, his last book I read was the same thing at the yeah. very, he had all these people, he talked about all these cool stuff, all these people. Yeah. And then the very last chunk of his book was about gratitude. And I just, I love, I love, uh, you know, putting, putting something at the, at the butt in is like, this is what it's either the beginning or the end. The most people, you know what I mean? It's like, yes. this, this is what people remember. Yes. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful, I just, I, I love that. Um, I just love that. That's your, you know, the, this series, five series, is like you, you're, you're, you're buttoning everything up with uh, gratitude and appreciation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Um, can you, you know, uh, I have a, so I have a little, it's kind of a, a gratitude experiment here. So sure. basically, um, I'm just, I'm going to ask you a few questions okay. and um, you just give me a short answer. Okay? okay. So when I say the word, somebody in my life I'm grateful for, who, right. who first comes to, who just pops in your head? What happens? The, I would say um, my grandmother. Okay. And then if I asked you a second time, somebody comes in your, your, you appreciate and you're grateful for in your life. Who's, who's, who popped in now? My grandson. Okay. And I'm going to ask you one more time because we're going to third layer. Who's the third person that popped in your head? Myself. Okay. So, Okay. So the reason I did that is because I wanted yeah. to, I, I wanted, most people have their go-to. So you landed on yourself, which I love. So go ahead and uh, express to me why you, why you said myself. Because I am grateful for myself because of everything that I've been through, my blessings to all the beautiful souls that I've come across. And beautiful souls, I say that because it doesn't necessarily have to be human beings. It could be an animal. Um, people come into your life for a reason or for a season and the, their blessings because it could have been something very challenging that I had to overcome but I'm grateful for myself for that I'm this person of love and empathy and that I learned to look in the mirror and say you know what you're an amazing person because that didn't come easily for me in the past 
Um, I very much lived in that victim mentality. I had a very abusive childhood, went through a lot of hardship with health and um, just ended a 29 year marriage with my husband. But I'm looking in the mirror and I say, you know what? You're still an amazing person and I love you. And I'm grateful mm -hmm. for myself because that's a journey of self love that I'm really proud of. That's beautiful. I, I love that so much. And I, I, it completely resonates with me, you know, so many different levels. Uh, if you can't, you know, if you don't love yourself, how can you really love other people? And how, if you can't love yourself, how can you really express that out to the world? Um, exactly. You know, and my, my friend Dino, who was on the podcast uh, last week, earlier this week, his, he had a defi his definition of gratitude was, I am enough. It is. Which, which is very similar to what you just said. And I, I yeah. loved, I love that answer. And that's goes back. That's basically the self love. I'm an, that's you know, I, 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 gratitude is love. Gra my, his definition of gratitude is I'm enough, which is like, is I love myself. Yes. I love, you know, I love me. That's that, right. and, and that's a beautiful, beautiful answer. I love that. <laughs> it's so true. it's not, it's not a, it's not a normal thing, you know, but no. you're making it very personal and real. And I, it, it resonates without much, you don't have to say, you honestly don't have to say much because it means so much. It's, yeah. um, it's Thank really, you. I really love that. Um, could you, uh, is there, um, any time in the last, I don't know, month or two, has anybody shown you, uh, some kindness? You had some sort of maybe interesting sort of kindness moment that you could share with us something that happened to you or something you were involved with? Of course. Well, every day. So I, it, it's not in the last month, every single day. Because okay. like I said, we do the prayer call every day. So that's the kindness that we show. Um, but uh, what I love is that the, well, Bobby and Nusha, that's a kindness introducing me to you. Um, every day there's kindness. Oh my goodness, that I live and I do. And then people give to me. Um, also collaborating with I Dare You To Be. So that was a kindness that this company reached out to me. They're an online movement that started because of COVID. They usually deal with uh, school systems and they put all the curriculum together for school boards, but they put on an online platform for children from ages kindergarten to grade 12 to be able to go online and have free resources for education. And then um, they loved my series and they made me part of their family. So, oh, wow. yeah. So, um, that's why the fifth book actually uh, is a sponsor is I dare you to be. So they be were the sponsor for the fifth book and they're going to be involved with me where they're going to have all my books as part of the curriculum from North America to UK and hopefully Africa. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is a huge kindness. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, it goes yeah. around, right? It comes back. Yeah. Whatever you give out to the world, it comes back to you tenfold. I don't do that for that, but it, it's the law of attraction, right? Right. So, um, but yeah, I was really excited that, um, that I Dare You To Be is uh, part of the Honey Cake series and I'm really excited for that. That's amazing. Wow. That really, <laughs> wow. I'm glad I asked that question. Wow. That's congratulations. That's really beautiful. Wow. The fact that they're, the fact that your book's going to be traveling throughout the, the world, right? There you go. Yeah. Your series, you, you, you've, you put it out and, uh, and now it's going to be, uh, you, you know, because of this company and what they're doing, that it's going to be, it's going to be all over the world. That's absolutely, that's, that's, that's any, any creator's dream. So yeah. there you go. Right. Hello. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's funny because when I first wrote these books, because like I said, I had no writing background and I had no intention to be a writer. Right. And I had nobody to be a coach or a mentor. So I didn't know what to do. Um, I just said, you know, I'm just going to put it out there. I wrote these books for a reason. So my two visions was I, this has to be in every school. It has to be part of the curriculum. The second was this has to be made into a TV show of some kind because there's no animation show for children that shows diverse characters and teaches valuable lessons like this. Yeah. And guess what? You there's got... a production company who's picked me up and now is pitching to Disney Junior and a couple of other studios to make how they take a TV series. Wow. How? Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. I mean, Thank wow. You. In fact, you've got these people that you've got, it's like, you, and you put it out and you've got these people that are just reaching out going, we love what you're doing. We want to assist this in, 
and becoming and, and, yeah in, in in connecting with more people um yes. and yes. uh you're i mean you're you got wow so that's yeah and, i mean yeah to be able to make an animated thing because it's kids always watch cartoons uh yes. that they to make it digestible in that way is a uh, what a what a blessing what a um to take it yeah. off the page and to be able yeah. to do that and the fact that you've got these people up to bat for you that's that's massive. That's, that's really amazing. That's really, really amazing. I'm so happy for you. I'm just happy. I'm just happy that that's something that's happening. You know, um, that's, that's it. That's in process. That's really exciting. Yeah, I'm excited awesome. to hear Thank the you. future. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you'll let me know and I'll find of out. Course, of course, of course, because there's so many kids out there that are honey cakes or a little bit of mix of something and they don't have anybody that represents them, you know, and right. they don't have to say, you know, oh, that looks like my family. I, I'm a honey cake. And that's the beauty of the terminology, what honey cake means. It's, it's so endearing and it's so catchy to say, hey, I'm a honey cake. And it, and it, it cause nobody's really one ethnicity. Like everybody has some right. kind of spice. Like for instance, Chris, like what's your background? Just, just to tell me. I, I think maybe my, uh, my father's parents came out of Europe, but I, I you know, there's, there's not, unfortunately, I could not tell you very much about that. They, <laughs> okay. they were no good about telling me where I came from. I asked several times. Okay. I'm sure that obviously, I'm not, was no. it, you know, it wasn't here. That's not how that yeah. works. So. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying there's probably some kind of mix of ethnicities it's not just straight one only one yeah you know yeah I, mean? I think i think it's maybe maybe italian i think my name's palmore but when i talk to some foreign people they're like i these a couple of friends of mine they're like palmore that makes more palmore, sense that it'd be considered yeah. palmore i like that a lot better too yeah, yeah. uh so maybe that's what it was and then yeah. maybe after generations it's just like all right palmore yeah. you know like it yeah. just completely got lost yeah. but i i like to think that that there's some italian background <laughs> right exactly but even your mom's side too your mom uh, my mom my mom's side my dad was an orphan so i didn't i mean her, okay. her dad was an orphan so i don't okay. think he knew his, okay. his, his but i'm saying that your parents have made you so you're really a honey cake because you don't know what's what kind of spice exotic spices you have going on around you so because honey cake doesn't mean color it's just a right. mix of ethnicity so anyways that's what that means <laughs> and like yeah. i said these books were made, uh, even like I said, for children, but they're secret messages for parents to realize the, the lessons that maybe they've forgotten along the way. Oh, yeah, it's definitely for everybody because I'm not a parent and I totally, I totally get it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I totally understand it. It's, it's always nice to have the reminders of those. These messages are great reminders for anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the great thing is if you're sitting with a kid you you got that you got you you're, you're getting it and they're getting it so it's yes. a really it's a it's it, you've created this magical moment where the yes. person that's older is remembering yes. this is good and they're sharing yes. it at the same time absolutely so it's, a, it's a it's a very special thing for somebody to sit down with the kid and, and have that connection so yeah and it's so simplistic yeah and i was saying this to you before too is that because like greeting cards are like you know five to nine dollars i don't know about you but it's really expensive here in canada mm -hmm. so instead of buying a card that they just look at it and they throw it away thank you very much unless there's money in it or whatever i always say get one of the books write your message in the book mm -hmm. so now they have a, a a tool or a book that has a valuable message but when they look at it they always will think about you and say oh you know, uncle chris got me that or you donated to a school or whatever but I just think it's just a better way than cards are just, you know, unless you cut them up and use it for other things, but cards. No, I th I, when you wrote me, but yeah, I thought, I think that's a brilliant, I think it's a brilliant idea. I totally do. Yeah. It's, if you're going to get somebody a card, then uh, giving them a, obviously giving them a book with a message with, and you can write yeah. it there. It's going to, it's going to mean, so it's going to mean five times more, 10 times more because card, cards either get thrown away or they get put in a basket and never looked at again. Exactly. <laughs> but with the book, could be any book. It doesn't have to be like, you know, I'm just saying at least that's something they will remember when they're reading that gets that an emotion. It's like, oh, like this is so beautiful, you know. Right, right. And like we said before, too, even if the kid grows up, the book, the book again can travel somewhere else. That's right. Opposed to it's because it's a book, it's not a card. A card's that's not right. traveling. A card's gonna go in the trash. That's right. Uh, a book a book can travel. That's right. exactly. So, uh, exactly. so it has That's that right. it has that possibility of of reaching another person too, which is really That's right. cool. That's so right. um 
you know, to, to close out here, do you have yeah. any suggestions for, um, for people? How, how to any daily suggest? I mean, we already talked about, you know, you said you wake up. I love the fact you wake up with a pair a prayer of gratitude, yeah. but if you were, you know, some other maybe daily things that you could suggest yeah. people to help them get into the practice. Absolutely. So I wake up, I do my prayer, but then every step I say, thank you. So every step I'm walking, I, you know, and I, I make sure I do a 20 minute walk in nature with no phone as well. And I say, thank you. I really take in the clean air, the trees, the nature I'm in. I'm thinking I'm in the shower. I'm saying thank you that I have water to take a, a bath in or a shower in, that I'm able to take a shower. Because a lot of people don't realize how grateful they are for things unless they get taken away. Unless they're put in a situation that, you know, they got so sick, they're not able to bathe themselves, or they can't dress themselves, or they can't feed themselves. So every day I say thank you. I thank you for everything, every little thing, because every day is a miracle. Everything is a miracle. And when you see it in that light you're like wow it's so true <laughs> like you know what i mean so no, I yeah mean. so i do that and then at the end of the day like i said i i say thank you for like i said whether it's a lesson that i learned or a wonderful experience like today so i always end with gratitude i wake up with gratitude and i end with gratitude and have gratitude through the day <laughs> That's beautiful. I, I love that saying, thank you. Uh, you know, my, my friend Dino said to me, when he was talking to me, he said, if you just wake up with the intention, you know, like you just say, today is going to be a great day. What, you know, and just like you, you're waking up saying thank you. What happens is through the day, your mind's automatically looking for things to say thank you for. And then at the end of the day, you get to reflect because you've done that. You can reflect on the things that you're grateful for and the Absolutely. reasons that why it's a great day. And then you, you've buttoned the whole thing up and it's, um, you know, I've been, I've been practicing that for the last couple of months and it's, it's a wonderful day way to start. And in the day I fall asleep very simplistically, you know, cause I'm yeah. not ever, I'm never caught up in like negative thoughts or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm basking in today was, this is why I was happy. It was happened today, you know, and then I just fall asleep. That's right. Not, I've got, I don't have any negativity keeping yeah. me, uh, ner you know, I don't, I don't go to sleep nervous or angry or, uh, you know, nothing's, nothing's keeping me no, because my body tends to. <laughs> I find that gratitude is that secret barrier, that protection of all negativity, and it just bounces it off. <laughs> it bounces oh, off. That's a great metaphor. I love that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's it's like, yeah, it's just. <laughs> it's like a shield, a visible yeah, it's shield. Like a shield. <laughs> Or like an oil and the water, the water's like negativity just falls right off of you because it can't stick onto you because when you're so grateful and you're beaming in that high level vibration, you're all good. Life is bliss. Right. It takes it. Yeah. To, to knock you down, it takes a lot more than the normal would normally do it. Right. Right. Because okay. you could f reflect back. So that was so beautiful. Uh, Medea, thank you so much uh, for coming on Gratitude Space Radio. I've really enjoyed our time. And okay. I'm so happy that I, uh, again, just thank you for sharing your, your books and I'm and all of the, your, the amazing things that are happening. And um, you know, I definitely think that some right down the road after you have, some, I know some more amazing things are going to happen. I would love to have you back on just to Absolutely. just do an update um, of what, what honey cakes doing and, uh, and what's been happening out in the world that we, because of this beautiful creation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Much. Okay. I'm Chris with uh, gratitude face radio and Medea saying, stay grateful. This is an open call to anyone that has a gratitude story or practice that they'd like to share. Just email me at the address hello at gratitudespace.com. That link will be in the show notes. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and rate us. You can look at this as a way of showing me a little gratitude. Just a friendly suggestion. Thank you for tuning in to Gratitude Space Radio, and we're out. <laughs>